I'm, I'm Mel. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Mel. This is Rachel. Uh, Rachel is one of my besties. She's also a uh, yoga teacher trainer okay. and an educational expert. Well, thank you. And um, very good singer. Hmm. Uh, she's very helpful in the kitchen. <laughs> she is. I like she to is. do dishes. Yeah, she comes right in and, um, <laughs> and, and tidies. I like tiny. Uh, anyway, today, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about, and this is for some of you a newer teacher. Well, or you know, this would still alarm me. So I think this is good for all levels of yoga teachers. But what do you do when you're teaching a class? And your students are not listening to you. Oh. Oh. And then somebody, you know, and that can be something minor or it could be something like someone's doing their own practice. Sure. You know, that's sure, happened to sure, me. Sure. Oh, oh, like last yeah. week, someone. Yeah. A couple, three times it's happened. I was to like, me. I was like, where? <laughs> I was like, what class are you in? Because it's not my class. Yeah. I don't know where you, but Well, and maybe. then that could be like, oh, uh, that could be like, oh, you, you don't. You don't like, like what I'm, I'm offering, that, or oh, I'm yeah. not. I don't have any value, or oh. Mm. Yeah, it can so it can lead to the rabbit hole of yeah. all of the mm-hmm. judgy thoughts, you know, the judge in your head, mm-hmm. which tells you what a terrible yoga teacher you are yeah, and how sure. boring you are. I love that. My judge loves to tell me, you're so boring. Oh. oh. You're such a boring teacher. Oh. So maybe you recognize some of those mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. All right, so what do you think? Someone's doing their own thing. Um, well, if they're, they're doing their own thing and it looks like they're not going to get hurt. Mm. So that's, that's always, that's my first, I'm like, oh gosh, you're going to blow out your knee. If the, if that goes, alarm goes off, then I, I may kind of go over and, and just try to guide and, and, and lovingly give space. Um, if they're doing their own thing and it's right in the front and it's still in a, like enough in alignment with what we're doing, but like it has expression to it. Some zhuzh. Yeah, it has some (laughs) zhuzh, right? Then I usually support them by uh, actually calling it out into the room. Hmm. So I'll say, yes, and you could add that bind around the back of your head while we're all doing lunch. (laughs) You could. And, you know, consider, I love the word consider, consider... Uh, you know, stabilizing and, and then I re back in of like why it would be valuable maybe not to put your leg around your head while we're in lunch because then you'd be maybe. on one leg floating. Right. With your leg. Yes. Yeah. Not good. No. Um, so, and, and so that, that may, but I feel like yeah. that's, that, that could be a little more of a mature teacher. I don't mean like old, but I mean, like, that's, <laughs> we're not know, that's old. like a seasoned but... teacher type thing to do yeah. to like, to be like, okay, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to literally like celebrate you in the, you yeah. in the front of the room doing exactly your own practice. Well, cause when somebody is in the, the front you. row doing their own practice and it's fancy, chances are that they want to be celebrated because otherwise, sure. you know, and it might be, that might be a situation where if somebody were distracting enough at the end of the class, I might say, Hey, Mandy, that was, <laughs> you have a spectacular pride. It's beautiful yeah. to watch you move. You know, would you, I have some beginners in here though. And I noticed them getting a little sure. confused because you're just doing more. And you know, you can be, this is a gracious. private, this is a private, private conversation. conversation. I might yeah. say you're doing an advanced practice, which is beautiful. I love it. Would you mind being though, maybe in the back row, just so that the beginners don't get confused because they don't understand yet. Yes. And so I mm-hmm. want to celebrate Mandy, but I also want to protect the other students in my class who might feel insecure, demoralized, confused. Yes. By that, you know, so it's good to acknowledge that. I think hey, that's there's wonderful. There's levels in the room, you know. That's and wonderful. Things, so. And it's loving. It and it's loving. of service. It's of service. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, the aspect, there's another aspect. And this is where the, the question of, like, will I do harm if I push my agenda, you know, if I go like this with the person, right? So let's say they're doing their own practice. And it's a little awkward, mm-hmm. right? So... And maybe you've tried to kind of acknowledge it, but there's just no, no shift. And, and maybe you've kind of said like, you know, consider we're going to get to this other pose. So just, you know, hang with me because I really want to warm you up properly. So you really have it in your body, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You try to sell it. You try to sell it, give it value yes. to the student. They don't seem to hear the value. Nothing's changed. Then... And maybe maybe this is a bad thing is to do. Is this your Italian? Uh, no, no, I actually... <laughs> You're dead to me. No, I actually, yes. I actually just literally put a loving box around them, and and I, I act like they're not there. I do no, I do that too. 
if if the student it's totally fine like I, i'm actually okay with somebody doing something sure. strange but i don't want it to take my energy or to take energy away from the students who are following the path that i'm carving out for absolutely. them absolutely you're taking your trek up the mountainside bon voyage yes. i'm going to take the group this way no i do the same thing it's like i don't feed the energy of that yes. either right yes yes you know there's this aspect to it one that if the person came into the room um to do the practice in the first place, I figure they need something. And so I'm there to be of service. So I do, if I, if it doesn't take away from the other students and that experience, then once I get a hold of my own kind of, uh -uh, mm -hmm. right, then it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm happy that this space is serving you in some way. Yes. I also want to highlight the difference between maybe um, the student with Mandy, whatever, whatever. Mandy. like doing a very fancy or, or different practice um, versus the student who um, is in child's pose or lays down into Shavasana early, something yes. like that. Um, because I have to say, like, if I come into your class and I lay down, just know that I just, I know it's a safe space and I need to rest, which, yes. you know, um, that's me yeah. usually. So, um, and that, that's different. Uh, yeah, I have a story about that. I had a, a student of mine, and she was a teacher trainee as well, wonderful yogi, um, and she suffered from chronic pain, had been in crazy car accidents, like had a rib removed, crazy stuff. Went to yoga class, and basically, because she loves the community and loves the space, and she went in, and one of the teachers, when she said, yeah, like I'm tired, blah, blah, I may not whatever be able to do everything, mm -hmm. et cetera, and the teacher said, well, maybe you shouldn't be in this class. Mm. <gasps> like of all the terrible, like, mm -hmm. oh, my heart just went yeah. out. So the yoga space, you know, to let people come and, and be in community and mm. be in relationship to themselves yeah. and to others, so precious and so important. So yeah. yes, I think it's really an, important to create a safe space for people to come and to just be. be. What, yeah. yeah. Start where you are, you know, be where you are, use what you have. Um, I, mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. And I have to say that I feel like maybe the next conversation or conversation and asking yourself as a teacher, you know, what is it that you value? And, and are you embodying those values in the room? And, and there's always that aspect, it's definitely with me, where it's like I have old programming of maybe... Um, you know, kind of ego-driven stuff like, oh, and will I be judged and all those different things. Yeah. And and then then the reprogramming or remembering of love and connection. And, and so like the value of the practice is that indeed to create this unified space where someone can come feel and heal, right? Feel and heal.